Hi, I'm Sophia Drysdale. I am a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I was the first female in Australia to get my black belt, which is a, yeah, a great accomplishment. Uh, I just recently competed in the Pan Ams and I won my division in the black belt division. Um, I started Jiu-Jitsu in Melbourne, Australia and now I live in Las Vegas in the United States. I started off being a gymnast, trained in the elite squad at my my gym with my twin sister, and uh, that was pretty hardcore. You know, we trained every day. Um, and then when I was 18, I stopped because I had a stress fracture in my shoulder that was really bad. And for like a year after that, I was just on the hunt to find a sport that was as mentally and physically challenging as gymnastics. And I tried a few things out, and then I found jiu-jitsu and I just loved it. So the first day I trained, I was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, this is what I've been looking for. And my goal is to become the first Australian black belt <laughs> on the first day. Well, it's allowed me to keep that focus. I've always been incredibly focused um, and goal-driven. Uh, and that's come from my days as a gymnast. So, and I really put all my energy towards it and try to be the best athlete that I can be, the best person that I can be, the best competitor that I can be, whatever. Um, you know, I've just really enjoyed the challenges uh, and the motivation, the discipline, and all the, all the awesome things that that type of training gives you, you can use, put it forward to your daily life and just become a better person. Um, and now I'm at a stage where, you know, I've been training for a good 10, 10, 12 years, where it's like I want to give back and and help others who are starting out, um, making their journey a, journey a little bit easier because it, it is a tough journey, especially being a female in this sport. It's really tough. Um, and so, um, yeah, I want to... Everything that I've learned, I want to sort of pass on to others and just kind of help them on their journey. Yeah, it's it's really tough trying to juggle it all, which has just made me have to um, be very, very smart with my time. Um, you know, I've thought to myself, oh, I do too much, but at the same time, I'm not actually willing to give anything up. So <laughs> obviously I love now that I have kids. Um, I love the gym that I train at uh, and running it, you know, and um, I'm, I love being able to train every day. I think the hard part for me is to keep in the competition circuit uh, because the training that you have to do to be a hardcore competitor is different from the training that you do when you're just training. And so you have to be in the gym twice a day and push the pace until you're going to be dying and puking and whatnot, you know. And that that also takes so much mental concentration. So for me, my my challenge has been trying to keep up that competitive pace and then go home and look after the family and deal with crying little babies who are sick or whatever, you know. So um, it has actually been a really really tough journey the last couple of years for me trying to manage it all which um, means that me winning the Pan Ams uh, in the black belt division just just now is even more rewarding because of the challenges that I've had to deal with leading up to that and seriously like anyone knows who, who's had babies that it's so much harder so much harder because it's not about you anymore it's about someone else so I'm, I'm just really happy that I'm able to accomplish both. Yeah, so at the moment I have a, um, a little one who's just about to turn three and uh, another one who's just uh, 13 months. I've actually, I realized um, that I've been pregnant or breastfeeding um, since the middle of 2010. You know, and I'm just crazy enough to get on the mat and train really hard during all of that. Like, I trained with both pregnancies up until I was seven and a half months pregnant. I had this belly out to here and I'm on the mat going, oh. You know, there were times where I was playing guard and I couldn't breathe because the baby's pushing on my lungs and diaphragm. I'm just like, oh my God. Yes, 
Yes, um, she's very athletic. Uh, but I don't think she'll do jujitsu. She's more interested in um, spinning around and looking like a princess. So I think that uh, ballet or gymnastics is going to be her thing. To be in the game and to be seen, you've got to compete. I understand that. Um, it's just that my focus now is not competing, even though I would like to win more titles as a black belt, and I'm the only Australian to have done that. Um, 2009, I won the Nogi World Championships as a brown belt, but with black belts when it was brown and black combined. So I just want to keep, keep doing that and keep inspiring other women and other Australians especially that can be done. Um, but my goal as I get older really is to teach more, uh, run seminars and just um, be that female role model that other women who are training can aspire to uh, and also um, just to be there to give advice and uh, support, yeah, support more than anything because what I'm finding is that women don't speak up enough. And if they've got a male instructor and they feel uncomfortable or there's issues or questions, they might not even voice their questions or voice their concerns. Um, but they will with a female instructor. And often if it's about more female-based things like, hey, I'm feeling intimidated or, or, I don't know, something a bit more psychologically based, they're definitely not going to speak up with a male instructor. And I've found that that's where I come in and that's where other female instructors come in. Um, and it's really, really, it's a really necessary part of the development of the sport for females. Women's Jiu Jitsu is very different, very different. Um, and the, the good thing about Jiu Jitsu is that you, you take the techniques and you mold it to your body type. And generally speaking, women do Jiu Jitsu in a certain way and men do Jiu Jitsu in a certain way. And throughout my life, I've in my experience of jiu-jitsu, I've had men instructors, but I've had to tweak all the techniques that they've taught me to work for me. And now what I want to do and what I have been doing is um, sharing my techniques that I've tweaked, that have taken me years to figure out and learn, where I can just go, look, here you go, this is what works for a female. You guys have to do this, you have to do this, this works better because this way might not work so well because you're not 220 pounds. So, so I'm, I'm wanting to cut the journey shorter for other people, you know, um, and it's through years of trial and error for, error for me that I know, and I know that works for a female. That was one of the most empowering things I've ever done, um, and it, it was so empowering for me because I knew that I was empowering others. Uh, and so I, I, I went over from the States and <clears throat> stayed there for a little while and was just there for the women that had travelled all over Australia to come and be to this camp. And it was a real honour that they had come, um, you know, partly for me and also for, for the camp and everything. But yeah, it was a real honour that I was teaching it. Um, and I just, um, it was so empowering in a number of ways. Um, one was the technical aspect in the sense that, you know, I was able to show my techniques that had the, the female tweak on it and all, see all these faces going, oh, wow, light bulb moments, you know, like, that's so cool because they may not have been shown that before by a guy, right? Um, and then there was the other section of the camp that um, was about support and like we had Q&A and anyone could ask me a question or we could, we could voice um, opinions or anything and share it all together and it was all from a, a women's perspective. Um, and really what kept coming up over and over was, um, you know, the whole pregnancy thing. And the, the girls were coming to me about that because they knew that I'd recently had two babies. And it's, it's a fact of life. Most women will end up having a baby or have had a baby at some stage in their life. And the juggle is the training and being a mother. And, you know, I, I'd i like to say that I'm like an example of any mother who wants to keep training. You know, it can be done. Like, I'm doing it. Well, I have a few things um, lined up, which is great. Um, I have 
some seminars lined up locally in, in the States um, uh, with uh, our affiliates. Um, so that would be good. That would be like women's only groups. And then uh, I have a big seminar lined up in Mexico in July. And that's with another, um, another really great black belt called Mackenzie Dan. Um, and yeah, we're, we get along really well, so it's just going to be a blast. Uh, and then going back to Australia in November uh, for my Australian tour. So the camp I did in February was really only in the one place. And now I'm going to all the other gyms all around Australia um, to do my tour. Uh, so because it's down the road, I haven't set everything up in concrete but I will be going to the west coast in Perth I'll be going to the east coast up north in Queensland and then Sydney and Melbourne and yeah I'll probably be going to at least 10 gyms I've been building a website that's taken far too long to build but <laughs> um, it's it's finally up uh, and it's just sophiadrysdale.com and really the focus is on uh, training health, fitness and pregnancy. So it's not just about jujitsu, but it's about like overall lifestyle and the, the sort of slogan of the whole website is um, health, fitness, pregnancy and the divine feminine. So my whole goal with the website is to just push everything that is feminine and just let all these women in the world acknowledge that it's all about feminine strength. You know, and it's my website's kind of like it's a support thing in a way. So there are workouts on there for women who are pregnant. There's postpartum workouts for women who have had babies and they need to get back in shape. They need to get strong and fit. Um, there's also everything to do with diet and nutrition and general fitness tips and whatever. So, and you know, there's also stuff about me. And I've had a lot of interest already and um, it's yeah pretty much up and running. So I welcome anyone to have a look at it. And that's sophiadrysdale.com. No, I, I don't. I'm actually a bit behind the eight ball with... That's okay. <laughs> I have an Instagram, though. My Instagram account is Sophia Warrior Princess. I'd just like to thank Fuji Sports for your belief in me, like opening that door, and, um, and for helping me on my mission of um, building awareness in the sport, on on promoting women in the sport and female empowerment. So I really appreciate you guys and um, hopefully together we can work on this mission. So thank you.